What's up everyone, my name is Alpha and today we're back with some more Radical Red. Today we're on Pokemon Radical Red 4.0, we're doing hardcore mode, back on the wheel, and we're actually down to our last final five, and we got Dark type. Again, I was expecting water, I don't know why I keep expecting, I've been expecting water since week two, and it looks like it's gonna come to the end, uh, at least the final four for water, but this time around we're gonna get Dark type as our mono type for this week, and I'm pretty excited because I know there's a lot of special Pokemon that I can get with Dark type Pokemon. And they also have infinite sucker punch, so I think I could, you know, you know how I like to play Radical Red. I spam a bunch of priority moves all the time. But either way, uh, if you guys don't know what we're doing, we're going to run it through a little quick. We're on Pokemon Radical Red 4.0, which is a Pokemon ROM hack of Pokemon Fire Red, which is a very hard ROM hack. And there's even a harder mode that limits your Pokemon's ability, their move sets, and all that. And it gives a lot of advantage to the AI. So we're gonna have to try to beat that on top of doing a monotype challenge. So it's it's a lot of fun. I'm not gonna lie. I'm getting used to uh, hardcore mode a lot more, and I'm pretty comfortable with it. Like I don't, I think if I play regular mode at this point, I think it'll be more boring. So I don't think I could go back after this. But either way, we're gonna try to beat Radical Red in hardcore mode using only Dark type Pokemon. And also include with that, each of my Pokemon would be nicknamed after you guys in the comments. Thanks so much for leaving a nickname in my previous challenge video. If you guys want to be nicknamed after your future Pokemon, just drop it in the comments and hopefully I'll pick yours. And why is it down there? Please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. Anyways, let's get into the challenge video itself. So to be an off, we're going to get ourselves a starter Pokemon, which is going to be Froakie. There's actually two different dark type starter Pokemon, or actually three different ones, if you count his soon Pokemon. But I actually wanted Froakie because to obviously... Greninja is one of my favorite Pokemon, so we're going to use Froakie, even though it's not a dark type right now, it can evolve into one eventually. So for now, we need actual dark type Pokemon, so we're going to start off with my beloved Houndour and also the other ones around. Poochyena actually ended up evolving early and being a really good Pokemon, so we're going to get ourselves a Mightyena very soon. Uh, C dot obviously you guys seen the grass type monotype is actually really good surprisingly so we're gonna move through the first part of the game pretty nicely uh Verdant Forest was not a problem for us we also get a Galarian Laloon which you know Obstagoon is pretty strong so we're gonna actually have no problem which beating through the first three boss trainers in the game and then from there we can make our way into Pewter City and then this is where this is actually probably the most challenging part of the run where we start uh, egg hunting uh, this egg merchant has a very low drop rate of getting ourselves a cup through and you might be wondering how low I don't know I spent over an hour looking for the eggs so yeah egg hatching for over an hour multiple times by the way this portion was only like 20 minutes uh then i got bored and then i finally decided to move through the game i had to face off against faulkner the mini boss in the game so i didn't get my cup food just yet so beat faulkner in like 20 seconds and then face out against brock the first gym leader in the game we're gonna start the battle off against brock using my lunoon against his hip -hop toss. we're gonna be able to headbutt down his hip -hop toss, and then he's gonna switch out into his leap for some reason, I'm going to switch out into my Alone Grimer, which is going to be very strong. It's a very tanky Pokemon. I'm able to poison down the Leap and then switch out into uh, my Galarian Lunu once again. Night Slash to knock out the Leap, which is really good. Also, Night Slash into the Arcan that comes out, bring him down to the Fetus, and then switch out to my Mariana, which will Sucker Punch, knock out the Arcan, and then bite into the Cacnea to knock him. I don't know why I didn't go for Sucker Punch, but a little bit of throw. Uh, Houndour would knock out the Cacnea and also... Wow, I'm actually throwing a lot, so Luntone would knock out my Houndour, but lucky enough, Nuzly will still be alive and knock out the Luntone for us, and also the Hippotas, which is really nice. His final poem will be a Vroom, which isn't too difficult. I just gotta break his air balloon, and I have a uh, Sandow in the back to use Bodos, and eventually, I break his air balloon and I go out into my Sandow to Bodos and knock out his Vroom. And we end up being down Brock, a bit scuffed, but you know what? My Dark Type Pokemon held his own, and we spent another 15 minutes going to the Egg Merchant, and we got absolutely nothing. So a whole waste of time. Didn't even get my Kupu. I got a bunch of different Fighting Type Pokemon, but obviously if I collect it, then I couldn't get it later on, so I didn't want to run the risk, so I decided to leave it, come back to it later. I face off against the Scientist in Mount Moon to clear through him, and face off against Archer. We clear through Archer to get into Cerulean City, which there's a lot more things for us. Uh, actually, Devo, Fox Pokemon, uh, is it Devo? 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 I don't know. It's a, it's a really cool Fox Pokemon that's a dark type. It's kind of, it's pretty useful, actually. Uh, we're also, Skunk Thing is pretty useful in this run as well, as we beat down a rival on the Nugget Bridge, and then we're going to make our way into the Nugget Bridge, pass it into South Down, into Vermilion City, face off against this double battle fight right before it, and then clear the room, and then start egg hunting once again now this one i was pretty i was just gonna stay committed for so for 30 minutes i decided to egg hunt and eventually eventually i get myself the cup boost so that was a whole journey uh 
So we get ourselves a cup food. We can't even use it right now, so we have to box it and then come back to it later. But from there, we're gonna face off against the second gym leader in the game. We're gonna face off against Misty. Misty's gonna start the battle off against us using a Politoed, which we're gonna use our shift treat into my Bombardier to catch out her Toxic Croak. And then from there, I'm going to pluck into it, almost knock out a Toxic Croak. As from there, she can switch out into her Clock Sire, which works out pretty well for us. As we're able to switch out into my Mighty Anna. Mighty Anna is able to flinch down the Clock Sire and then eventually knock him out. Come on, get a second flinch. Get a second flinch. No, he doesn't get a second flinch. Clock Sire ends up knocking out my Mighty Anna, but I go out to my Ship Tree to fake out and then a Night Slash to knock him out. I could have gone for a Leaf Blade. I think that would have done more damage. But from there, her next potent will be a Mantine, which I go out into my Bombardier, which doesn't get an attack off but i could pivot into my hisuian quillfish and then from there i could bar barrage into the polito that she switched out into and i could knock him out in two shots her next potent will be the man time which i go for a bar barrage and eventually i am able to chip it down i'm able to go out to my skunk tank do some more chip damage i was pretty certain i could survive a move until it burned me and then from there it's a bit of a waste of time unfortunately for skunk tank not a good showing, but I'm able to go out to my ship tree, fake out into Sucker Punch to knock out the Mantine, to knock out the Ludicolo in two shots, uh, with a Leaf Blade and Sucker Punch, which is huge. Her next potent will be a Starmie, which I go for a Sucker Punch as well, to knock out the Starmie, and also Sucker Punch to knock out the low HP Toxicroak, and again, ship tree, it's just so good. What a good Pokemon. So from there, we can move on into the SSN, and once we're in the SSN, we can face off against this Water Trainer with my newly grabbed Ash Greninja from my starter Pokemon. You can actually switch the ability. The secondary ability in this game is going to be Battle Bond, opposed to Protein. Protein is going to be the hidden ability, which I actually found out to be more useful than Battle Bond, which is surprising. So I uh, will get that eventually. Uh, from there, we can face off against a rival in the SSN as well. Brendan's pretty easy. We have a Pangoro out of everything. Uh, from there, we can move on and face off against Lieutenant Surge, the third gym leader in the game. We're going to start the battle off against him using my Pangoro to Arm Thrust and just one cycle his Brodom Frost pretty easily. His next potion will be a Pawna, which kind of gives me a bit of trouble, so I want to chip down with Bullet Punch. Go out to my Shift Tree to fake out into him. And since he used Close Combat, his defense are really lowered, so I'm able to knock him down to low HP. He's going to knock on my Shift Tree, so that's two Pokemon down, but I can go out to my Mighty Anna to Sucker Punch and knock out the Pawna. His next moment will be an Electrode, which I go for a Sucker Punch, and then he knocks himself out with Chloroblast, so, I mean, I guess it works out. I go out to my Overcool next, which is the evolved form of Quillfish, uh, his suing Quillfish. I'm able to Barbarash into the Hitmonlee and eventually knock him out, which I don't know why he just lets me knock out his Hitmonlee. Uh, but from there, I'm able to also poison to the Ampharos and then knock him down to low HP as well. Eventually, he knocks him, eventually I just knock him out. So Overquill is pretty strong over here. It tanks a lot of moves and does a lot of damage. As his final poem will be a Raichu. I go out to uh, my Skunk Tank to Night Slash into him and then sack him to the Rising Voltage. As I do have uh, Houndoom in the back with Suck Punch to knock him out. And we end up being down Lieutenant Surge. Now from there, we can make our way into Rock Tunnel. I'm not going to show Rock Tunnel because it's a whole dark area. We got ourselves the Rock Side team at least, and then from there we can face off against the Sunny Day Trainer. We clear the room pretty easily as our Overcoat will knock out the Sylveon. We're going to face off against this Hisuian Double Battle Fight, which isn't too difficult. We're going to make our way into Celadon City, and then finally make our way into the counter to get ourselves the Dust Stone to evolve our Kupfu into an Urshifu. So already a legendary Pokemon. Uh, it's pretty strong. We also get ourselves a Hantro, which we don't use, so Urshifu is going to be really nice as we're going to start the battle off against the fourth gym leader in the game, Erika, with my Urshifu. We're going to Dynamic Punch into the Cradley to confuse it, let it hit itself so we could block off rocks, and then from there, uh, I missed it. I don't know why I went for a Dynamic Punch. I don't have what it killed, but anyways, I mean, we knock out the Cradley. Her next poem will be a Halucha, which I'm going to stay in. I'm going to Wicked Blow and then switch out afterwards. Uh, no, I don't. I just sack my... No, I take it back. Her Shifu just goes down. I go for Sucker Punch, chip it down even more, go out to my Greninja to... Uh, Water Shuriken to knock out the Halucha, and then from there, her next poem will be a Galarian Slowbro. I go out to my Skunk Tank next, which will Night Slash into him, force her out into her Kartana, which I'm able to do some chip damage, and then go out to my Shift Tree to fake out and Suck Punch. It doesn't kill him, but it's gonna knock him down to low HP to allow myself to go out to my Greninja to Water Shuriken to knock out the Kartana, as her next poem will be a Toxic Tree. From there, I go out to my Grim Snarl, which would which will fake out and Sucker Punch to knock out the Toxic Tree and also do a lot of chip damage against the Slowbro. Eventually knock out the Slowbro and do... Do I... No. Uh, I get Drago Barrage against the Sceptile, but I'm able to get Sucker Punch off. And then my final Pokemon will be an Alolan Muck, which would be a problem, but it's in grassy terrain. Her ground moves are actually weakened, so I'm able to Gunk Shot and knock out the Sceptile as we're ready to beat down Erica. In a pretty easy manner, I guess. 
From there, we're going to move out and face off against Giovanni in the bottom of Team Rocket's hideout. Not too difficult, but the only thing, <laughs> the only way I can escape is my Greninja, which has uh, the only Pokemon that can learn Dig, apparently. Uh, from there, we can move out into Lavender Tower, which we cleared through pretty easily, and face off against a rival in Silphco. We cleared through a rival in Silphco. And from there, we can move out and face off against Archer and Ariana. Uh, this fight normally is a little more difficult, but since we have like just infinite priority with every single Pokemon on my team, uh, things are pretty good. We also get Dark Post on my Greninja, which makes it so much better. Uh, we still haven't changed the ability just yet. We're going to decide to do that later on, as we're going to face off against Giovanni once again in Silph Co. And then we're clearing down with my Obstagoon, which is... Oh my... Obstruct into Sucker Punch is such a nasty combo, which I love. From there, we're going to face off against Chuck, which surprisingly... It's actually really easy. We actually beat Chuck in like a few attempts, which I forget, but is a really recent. I think it's the Steel type one, which took me forever to face off against Chuck. Like he was just cooking me. But this Dark type run, looking pretty good. I think the hardest thing in my Dark type run so far was getting the Ishifu. Uh, from there, or the Kubfu earlier. From there, we're gonna move on and face off against Sabrina. Sabrina's gonna be the fifth gym leader in the game. We're gonna start the battle off against her. in her double battle fight with Misty Terrain and Infinite Trick Room. It's gonna be interesting. We're gonna start the battle off against her using my Shifu and Obstagoon. We're gonna actually just force her out to use Misty Explosion since we're dark type. So we're gonna knock out the Tapu Fini in the first uh, turn. And then from there, I can close combat and hopefully Obstruct actually works in this 50 50. And it does lower the defense of the Iron Hands and I get a close combat off using my Shifu. And from there, unfortunately, he doesn't kill the Iron Hands, but uh, it works out for us as we can go for a Detect on my Rashif. I just let my Obstagoon go down as I go out to my Greninja next. I'm able to go for close combat against the Iron Hands and then Water Shuriken to knock out the camera. I activate my... Wait, what? Why did my... Oh, wait, it's Protein. Okay, now I switched it to Protein. And in close combat, almost knock out the Iron Hands once again. From there, I'm able to go for a Water Shuriken into the Iron Hands to knock him out. And then my Ushifu can go for a Close Combat against the Glacier, which works out really well for us as it goes for Swords Dance. And then her final two Pokemon will be Jellicent and Magirna. Uh, I'm obviously going to go for a Detect just to save my Urshifu, uh because it's an extra Pokemon for her to target, so it's a little harder for her. From there, my Greninja goes down, but I go out to my Skunk Tank. Uh, I go for a Sucker Punch against Jellicent, and then obviously my Shifu just stays alive. And it works out pretty well as my Skunk Tank is able to knock out a Jellicent. She's going to knock out my Skunk Tank, which is fine. I go out to my Houndoom. It's 3v1 against the Magirna, so I'm able to just attack into the Magirna. It goes down to low HP, and at this point, either my Overquill or my Urshifu will knock him out and go to my Urshifu. Urshifu just lived the entire fight. And we're able to beat down Sabrina, get ourselves the 5th gym badge in the game. And then move out into Cycling Road, which we're going to make our way into Fuchsia City, which isn't too difficult. I don't know who, but I know some people actually go the different route, like the alternative route on the other side into route like 15 and 16. You guys got to be some demons. Like, there's no way I would do that. There's so many fights. There's so many more fights. And also, the fights seem harder. I don't, I've been there like a few times. Not fun. Uh, from there, we're going to move out into the Safari Zone. We're going to clear through Brendan, which isn't the biggest concern. We're also going to go into the Safari Zone to do multiple things. To get the eight gems for Strength and Surf. And also get some more Dark Type Pokemon. There's a Brute Bonnet and also Bisharp out here. You want to use all your opportunities to get yourself a Bisharp. Because uh, Bisharp will evolve into King Gambit, which will be very good. From there, we're forced to rematch the first three gym leaders, which isn't too difficult. We're going to face off against Brock and Greninja is actually really broken. Like, have you guys ever seen Greninja? You know, this thought, I think it was banned in Gen 7. Right? Was it banned in Gen 7? I forget. Uh, but Gen 7 OU, this thing was a monster. Uh, from there, we're gonna move out, face off against Misty. She, uh, Misty again, wasn't a problem at all. As she, I'm just gonna cook up everything. Uh, I do go down to my last poem, but I wasn't scared at all because my obstacle just cooks everything. And against Lieutenant Surge, we're able to beat him down as well. Not, nothing to really worry about as we're gonna face off against Koga next. Koga takes a little bit of planning, but it works out at the end. We're gonna start the battle off against him using my King Gamut, and we're gonna force the Tapu Lele to land a Focus Blast. You know, Focus Blast is notoriously known for always hitting, so we're able to just avoid a Focus Blast. Iron Head to knock out the Tapu Lele. He's gonna switch out to your Shiyu, which I got to on my Houndoom. It's going to absorb the fire move and then snarl into the Shiyu and then Sand to two shot into the Shiyu and eventually we're able to knock out the Shiyu. The next one will be a Hoopa Unbound, which I'm going to let my Houndoom go down, go out to my King Gamut. With a Focus Sash, I'm going to go for a Metal Burst and knock out the Hoopa. From there, his next one will be a Needle King. I sack my King Gamut, go out to my Ishifu, which will two shot into him and survive an Earth Power, which is nice. From there, his next one will be a Toxicity. He's going to knock out my Ishifu, but I go out into my Crocodile. Which will go for an Earthquake, which is the only time you see Crocodile do anything. Uh, I live with 1 HP, luckily, and I'm able to knock out the Toxic Tree and then go out to my Overquill against uh, the Crocodile. Which I was surprised that it actually lived at Aquatel, so I'm like, uh oh. 
what do I do here? I activated his Moxie, so that's pretty bad for us. I go out to my Hydreon. I thought the battle was over. I'm not gonna lie. I thought the battle was just like lost. I go out to my Hydreon. I live the close combat, surprisingly. And Dark Pulse, luckily enough, is enough to knock him out. So we're able to beat down Koga, but uh, it was, it's getting a little scary. I'm not gonna lie. From there, we're gonna move out and face off against Price. Price is a pretty easy fight. We get ourselves the Choice Scarf, which we end up using a few times. Uh, we also face off against Jasmine, finally getting used out of Choice Band as well. And then we're going to move on into Blaine's Gym, which isn't too difficult. We're going to face off against Blaine's uh, trainers in here and then beat him down. And then face off against Blaine himself. So firstly, we're going to face off against Blaine using my Shift Tree, which is kind of ironic since he has infinite uh, Desolate Land. Uh, so we're going to use my Shift Tree to go for a Fake Out into a Leaf Blade, which in Chlorophyll would outspeed a Sandy Shock and knock him out. His next opponent will be a Venusaur, which won't outspeed me, which I do get a bit of chip damage off against him. I go out to my Mega Absol next, and Mega Absol is able to Sucker Punch twice into the Venusaur to knock him out. His next opponent will be a Mega Charizard X, which I'm going to Sucker Punch into him, and then go out into my King Gambit to Sucker Punch and knock him out. Sucker Punch is going to be a recurring theme, if you guys can't tell. But I go out to my Shifu against the Great Tusk to close combat, and doesn't knock him out. So I got to go back into my King Gambit to knock him out with a Sucker Punch. His next opponent will be a Walking Weight, which I just can't stay in. I thought I was going to survive a Flamethrower. I don't know why I thought that, but uh, I knock him down to low HP, and then Sucker Punch with my Obstagoon. Uh, uh, unfortunately, the Ho-Oh comes out. I was like, oh, I knew it. I knew this can come out. But anyways, from there, I'm just going to let him hit me with Sacred Fire and then counter and knock him out. Again, activate his Phoenix Forward. I go for an Obstruct to lower his defense, and then it works out. I'm going to suck Punch him down to low HP. And then my Muck also has Sucker Punch. will knock out the Ho-Oh and also the Walking Wake as we're ready to beat down Blaine. And yeah, pretty easy fight. Now, from there, we're going to move out into Cerulean Cave where we're going to get ourselves a Guzzlord from this raid den. Isn't too difficult. Pretty free Pokemon. We use it for a little bit. And from there, we're going to move out and face off against Archer, which technically was a little hard of a fight, but we got through it. Eventually, my Bombardier makes a return and actually destroys the Buzzwool and the rest of Ariana's team, which we really like to see. Uh, we finally get the Mega Stone for Houndoom, which is going to be probably the Mega Pokemon I choose to use as we face off against Giovanni. And we just clear down Giovanni. is isn't too difficult of a fight. And then from there, we're going to move out and face off against Claire. Claire's giving me the final gym leader in the game. We're going to start the battle off against her using my King Gambit. King Gambit's able to go for an Iron Head and actually flinch down a Shuckle twice and then deny rocks and hazards all like everything like that. We're going to beat down Shuckle and then her next bone will be an Eternatus, which I go out to my Muck. Muck's able to go for a knockoff and to suck punch and uh, works out decently. As I go out to my Greninja next for some reason, I go for an Ice Beam and I catch the Magirna as I go for a U-turn, go out into my Houndoom. Uh, I'm going to go for a Flamethrower as she goes out to her Roaring Moon. I pivot into my Shifu, which will close combat and knock out the Roaring Moon for us. As her next Pokemon will be the Magirna once again. I go out in my uh, Houndoom to survive an Aura Sphere and then Flamethrower to knock him out. Her next Pokemon will be Eternatus. Knocks on my Houndoom though. As I go out into my Shifu, my Shifu is able to Wicked Blow and knock out the Eternatus and also the Ultra Necrozma in one shot. So uh, I think the battle might be over. Uh, from there, I'm going to switch on to my Greninja to just reset my Urshifu's Choice Scarf and then go for close combat with my Urshifu against the Duraludon and then King Gavit, of course, suck a punch to knock him out as we're ready to beat down Claire and really boring fight, just overall easy as we face off against our rival in Route 22 and we're able to beat him down as he just lets me suck a punch everything else. So from there, we're going to face off against Brandon in Route 23, which isn't too difficult once again. Again, King Gambit is pretty underrated. I don't know, a sh uh, Supreme Overlord with all the uh, suck punch I can use, it's pretty broken. I'm de really debating between Houndoom and Absol. I'm, I'm looking at Absol, I'm like, I want to use him because I use Houndoom so much in the last uh, challenge. But uh, it makes more sense to use Houndoom. Either way, from there, we actually go back, go into Viridian Force to get ourselves a Zerud, which is going to be Dark and Grass type. Not a lot of people actually use a Zerud, and I'm not I'm not a big fan of it, but I do need it. I assume we're going to face up against Lord Water Team, and we do as we check out the NPC out here. And that means we got to go out and start hunting for some Choice Scribes. We get a few more Choice Scribes. We get three more Choice Scribes uh, from the Raid Dents out here. Now, before we make our way into the Leaf 4, we actually decide to face off against Erica once again in a rematch. We don't need to do this, but I decided to get the Grass Knot TM from her. Uh, you only get that if you rematch her, and we get it. And then finally, my final team will be just as on screen right now. Uh, Urshifu, 
uh, Zerud, King Gambit, Muck, Alolan Muck, uh, Greninja, Protein, and then Mega Houndoom, which is going to be pretty cool. Uh, from there, we're going to face off against Lorelai's Water Team. We're going to start the battle off against her team using my Shifu and also Greninja. Now, I want to use Detect on my first turn because I know it's going to attract Fake Out and all the attention. So from there, I'm going to go for a U-turn to break. I think Iron Bundle has a Focus Dash, but either way, just to uh, break it just in case. From there, I go out to my Zerud. Uh, get some more attention on me as I'm able to go for a wicked blow against their Ludicolo. From there, I'm able to suck punch into the Ludicolo as my Zerud will go down to the Iron Bundle. As from there, I go out into my Houndoom. From there, I'm able to go for a close combat against the Genesec and then Fiery Wrath uh, to knock everything down to low HP. Iron Bundle's on low HP, which works out as I'm able to go for, as I'm able to go for a suck punch and then go for another Fiery Wrath. Unfortunately, uh, the Palkia is going to knock on my Houndoom before then, but I'm able to get a close combat off against the Palkia, which works out. From there, I go out into my King Gambit. I'm able to suck punch into everything and knock out both the Palkia and also uh, the Iron Bundle. Her final two Pokemon will be a Dragonite and Swampert, which we just need to just target down a Dragonite. And eventually, we do pretty well. We knock him down to low HP. And my final two Pokemon will be Muck and also Greninja, which I go for Grass Knot against the Swampert and Suck Punch to knock out the Dragonite. And from there, <laughs> lucky enough, I, I made a survive an Earthquake. And then Grass Knot would knock out the Swampert as we're going to beat down uh, Lower Light. From there, we can move on face off against Bruno. We're going to recent to get Bruno's Infernate team, which we're able to go for Water Shuriken. And then it goes, it goes for Close Comet. So I'm like, oh, so. I, at least I deny rock somehow as we already knock out the infernity. His next one will be a Zacian, which I do some chip damage with water shuriken. But eventually I want to go out to my muck to rock tomb into him. And he's going to knock me out with a close combat, but that's fine. I go out to my mega houndoom to flamethrower and knock him out. His next one will be a Zerora, which obviously I'm going to go for scorching sand for some reason. And a switch out. I don't know why I did that, but I'm switch out into my Zerud. Zerud barely takes a drain punch and he's going to go down to a plasma fist. Go out to my Yoshibu to wicked blow and knock him out. His next one will be an Iron Valiant, which I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go out to my Houndoom for some reason. Take up Moonblast. I don't even outspeed him. And I go for Flamethrower and then get a lucky crit to knock him out. So, you know what? We'll take that for the moment. From there, his next one will be a Necrozma Dust, which I stack my Houndoom to. Go out to my King Gambit to suck Punch and knock him out. His next one will be a Lucario, which I do have a Focus Sash on, which I can Metal Burst into him and then knock him out. So, it's a pretty free fight as we beat down Bruno. We're going to move on and face off against Agatha, which for our rock now, this time we're going to use my old traditional uh, Urshifu, <laughs> Urshifu Dynamic Punch into uh, the Crocodile. And it actually knocks him down to low HP. The Crocodile hits itself. It actually knocks itself out as her next Pokemon will be a Yvelto. I go out to my Houndoom to go for a Snarl and lower his special attack twice. And then from there, Houndoom goes down. But I go out to my Greninja to do some more chip damage eventually gives them down to low hp with the burn but to my shifu and lucky enough i got a very lucky wicked blow into him as he switched out to his victini for some reason so i'm able to catch the victini and knock him out so that's a pretty free win as her next poem will be a calrex i go out to my muck which would two shot into him two uh, knockouts would knock out the calrex as her next poem will be a mewtwo x it's gonna knock out my muck but i go out and see my king gamut king gamut is able to metal burst once again and knock him out in one shot which is really nice her next one will be a Fluttermane. It's going to knock on my King Gambit. I go out to Zeru for some reason. And I'm like, what am I doing? Else? Whatever. I'm going to go for Power Whip. And Power Whip actually knocks him out. So I'm like, okay. I guess it works out. Power Whip also knocks out the Yvelto at 1 HP, basically. So we end up beating down Agatha in like a pretty funny way. From there, we're going to move out and face off against Lance next. Lance is going to be a pretty easy fight. We start the battle off against him using my Houndoom to Mega up. We didn't even Mega. I went for Fire Wrath. Flinch down to Glamora, and then from there I could go for Scorching Sand. Unfortunately, he's gonna switch out to his Arceus Fairy as I go out into my Muck. Muck's able to survive any move at this point, so Gunk Shot into him would knock him out uh, with the poison. So from there, he's gonna switch out into his Dialga, which obviously I wanna stay in. I'm gonna knock him out, which doesn't do anything. Go out to uh, my Greninja to Dark Post as it decides to switch out to the Metal Metal, which I'm like, okay, that's interesting. I go out to my Houndoom, I survive with a double Iron Bash and then Flamethrower into him. Doesn't knock him out, but I go out to my Greninja to knock him out. And then his next poem will be the Dialga once again. I go for Dark Post, he's gonna go for Aurora Time. Doesn't knock me out, as I go out to my Alone and Muck. Muck's able to knock off once again, and then he's gonna Aurora Time into my Shifu, which, yeah, close combo would knock him out. As his next poem will be a Mega Ray, I go out to uh, my Alone Muck. Take a Dragon Ascent and then switch out into my Zerud for some reason. Okay, Zerud's gonna suck punch and then die to the Dragon Ascent. As I go out into my King Gambit to suck punch and knock him out. His next moment will be a Dragonite. I go for an Iron Head uh, to break his uh, multi scale and then survive an Earthquake. And two Sucker Punch would knock him out as we would knock out 
uh, Dragonite and also the Glamora pretty easily as we beat down Lance of course and we can move on and face off against a rival. We're going to obviously restart until we get this Dynamic Punch working. So we get Dynamic Punch into Confusion Hit, which works out. From there, I'm going to stick with Dynamic Punch. I land another one. And then from there, he's going to switch out into Xerneas, which doesn't work for me. As I go out to my King Gambit for some reason, this is like a brain fart. I thought I was going to go for Geomancy as it goes for Moonblast. Luckily enough, I committed too hard and it's going to hit itself in Confusion thanks to Dynamic Punch. As I'm able to Iron Head and knock out Xerneas, as his next one will be a Walking Wake. I want to keep my King Gamut for later as I go out to my Zerud. Zerud gets nice damage on the Walking Wake as I go back out into my King Gamut to Suck Punch and knock him out. As his next one will be an Arceus Steel. Uh, I don't really have a plan here, so I'm a Suck Punch. Sack my King Gamut, go out into my Houndoom for some reason. Scorching Sand and Burn him, by the way. So I'm able to survive against the Arceus. Knock out the Arceus with my Houndoom. And from there, from there, I'm able to do some chip damage against the G-Max Eternatus. Go out into uh, my Muck, and Muck's able to go for a knockoff and Suck Punch to chip him down. Go out into my Greninja to Water Shuriken and knock out the Eternatus. From there, his next one will be a Mega Swamper, which I go for Water Shuriken. Doesn't do a lot of damage, but I know I couldn't outspeed him because he's going to Swift Swim with Swamper. But I go out to my Shifu and land a third Dynamic Punch. I'm like, what am I doing looking back at the footage? I could have gone for a Wicked Blow. Uh, but from there, I go for a Sucker Punch to knock out the Swamper, and his final Pokemon will be a Kyogre, which you go for a Wick Blow and knock him out as well. So we end up beating down a rival pretty easily. A Shifu's a really broken Pokemon. That's why I keep saying I cannot wait for the Water type one, because there's so many broken Water type Pokemon. Like, we could use a Shifu Water and also Greninja in the Water type Monotype. It's going to be really, really fast. I feel like this one was really fast as well, because, uh, you know, I kind of just struggled. Like, most of it was like at least an hour of just sitting there and just hatching eggs it was not that fun and honestly if we actually take that out of account this run was pretty easy if you guys want to have a free run either use a fairy type use a psychic one or a dark one this is so far the easiest typings honestly and um anyways that'll be all my time for today thank you so much for watching all the way to the end i hope you guys all enjoyed this video if you guys can please leave a like and subscribe to my channel it means a lot to me anyways my name is Benalpha, and i hope you guys all have a great day and i'm out peace